TV is in front of you, your friend is sitting next to you, and you're just like, bro, what are we watching? What are we watching? What are we watching? The food goes cold, now it is inedible, you're still thinking, what are we watching? We're still scrolling. So I feel that is a big pain that Netflix has solved, question mark, question mark, question mark, has produced, question mark, question. has definitely produced. <laughs> because, because again, that's the thing with choice, right? The moment you give someone the option. Netflix built an empire of media, unseen before its time. People were still renting out DVDs. I was still going to the far market and buying fake DVDs. And Netflix came in and tore them apart. There were like proper, proper video stores which have now gone out of business. All thanks to Netflix. Blockbuster has gone out of business. All thanks to Netflix. How did they achieve it? What makes them so valuable? Let's talk about that. So as always, let's get started with pain. What is the pain that Netflix solves? Let's talk about health. Netflix solves the health issue of I am stuck at home, what do I watch? Loneliness. Netflix solves the loneliness issue that I am stuck at home and I am all alone. I am alone. I have nothing else to do. What do I watch? I am not limited to what's coming on TV. I can watch what I want. Netflix solves the age-old question of how do I ask the girl out? <laughs> I should just say, hey I think babe. That's a, I think that's a relationship problem. <laughs> I should just say, hey babe, let's Netflix and chill. Yeah, I think we're jumping the gun here. Like a lot of people who are Netflix and chilling. <laughs> but yeah. I think that's a more relationship pain that it's solving. But let's look at wealth. Netflix also solves the problem of mid-parents where, where their kids <laughs> don't stop crying. If you've not checked out our last episode, do that. We talk about Disney and Disney solves this pain in a greater manner. But I think Netflix is getting there with all the Netflix originals for kids. I think Netflix is the daily solver. Like, you know how we spoke about Disney being like the, oh, once in a year, twice in a year, Disneyland. Netflix is the, oh yeah, I do this, end of the week or end of the day, I get to watch this. So Netflix is the dollar note, a five dollar note, and whereas Disney is probably like the hundred dollar note. So Disney Plus dreams of being Netflix, but Netflix doesn't open theme parks. Maybe that's what's in line for them. But anywho. Netflix doesn't open theme parks, but like there's so much stuff that is on Netflix that has its own theme parks, if you think about it. Like, you know, Harry Potter was once on Netflix. There is a whole Harry Potter world that has been built. People go all the way to London for Harry Potter. People go all the way to Orlando for Harry Potter. So Harry Potter has created that. Let's get to the probability later, but let's talk about the dream. I want to talk about the pain of wealth first. We haven't spoken about that. Okay. What is it? What is the wealth pain that Netflix solves? Is it just because you're getting all you can at a cheap cost? I feel there the pain of wealth can be solved in two manners. One is how can I make more money by using this service? The other is how can I spend lesser amount of money or what will I save by using this service? I think it's done a lot for the movie industry. Especially like forgotten cult movies that have gotten their distribution sold to Netflix. It has also done a disservice to the coming up movies. Because now what, what I do is I just like, okay, it's released, it's fine, I'll just wait for it to be on Netflix. Right? So that's two sides of the coin. I think it's also a positive because now suddenly movies have two releases. A, the a theatrical release and a OTT release. I don't think it's right to put Netflix and OTT together because I feel like Netflix has definitely created its own niche. Like Netflix is, I would say today, in my opinion, by far and above in its own playing field. Netflix built the playing field. Netflix built the sport. Netflix built the playing field. And in that, Netflix has a ranking that is higher than every other player that is there. There used to be a company called Blockbuster. And what Blockbuster used to do is they had physical stores all across America where you could go and rent a DVD. Exactly. And Netflix started as a DVD rental company without the stores. So Netflix 
solve the problem that if my DVD return is late, I have a late fee. So Netflix said, why don't you subscribe to us? We'll give you X number of DVDs a week and you can return them. But even if you don't return them on time, it's okay. We can wait. There is no late fee. Earlier, they thought that they're going to be, you know, shat upon because of this. But then they got customer loyalty and then they got more customer loyalty. And then, you know, they realized there's this beautiful thing that's coming up. It's called the internet. And nobody could believe that internet would be what it is today. But in terms of Netflix, they decided why not just give them our entire, you know, library. Arsenal, right? Our entire library of movies forever at like a very small cost on a monthly basis. So I think the funny story of Netflix and Blockbuster, which has been told time and time again, I feel like it's one of the oldest stories of, oh, they didn't know the value. Similar to Yahoo and Google. I think it was Yahoo, right? Who had a proposal to buy Google when it was like next to nothing. Similarly with Blockbuster, they were about to buy Netflix when it was next to nothing. But then they were like, no, it's okay. We will just be better than them. And then I think eventually Netflix bought out whatever little bit of Blockbuster that was, that was left. I think Blockbuster just declared bankruptcy. They were not willing to embrace the internet. They decided this is not the way to go. Internet, nobody's going to buy into this shoddy crap, right? Who cares if you can do stuff on your desktop? Who cares if you have access to the entire world sitting in your room? Who cares? Well, people do care. And we figured it out time and time again. right? And nowadays, when we talk about different technologies like crypto, like blockchain, like AI, and there are people who are like, who cares? Time you never know. I feel like the who cares didn't work for Blockbuster. And that is the thing that, okay, you go the who cares route. But if you look at the competition that's around, today, what, every single media player has a OTT platform of their own? Yes. Hulu, Disney, Amazon, YouTube also you pay for that. If you talk about India, Star has their own thing called Hotstar in conjunction with Disney, right? And then Z Sony has, has its own ones. Sony, Sony has, has its yeah. own one. And then there's the even more obscure ones, and then there's the regional ones, and then, like there's there's a lot. And when you talk about the US, Netflix started it, Hulu came along, you can watch ads, you don't need to pay us any service, and then they made no money, and then they had to launch a service fee even for the ad platform. Then HBO is like, oh, we need to launch something, and they had very good originals, so Game of Thrones being one, everybody knows about that. And you know, from there, Peacock, NBC, everybody needs to make their own thing. But still, they need to sign up with Netflix because nobody will watch anything else. Customer acquisition is a big issue. Customer retention is another big issue. I mean, Amazon has started showing live sport. Apple TV has started showing live mm -hmm. sport. Netflix has gotten into none of this. And I feel like Netflix still has that little premium that, that exists. There are, there's a reason in India today, people are willing to pay 800 rupees a month for Netflix when you're getting hot start at like, 1000 rupees a year or 1500 rupees a year. Yep. Amazon Prime comes at pretty much the same cost. Like Netflix is so much more expensive than all of these other platforms, yet it manages to keep its viewers. It's also that much more engaging. I don't know why. I open the Hotstar app and there's nothing to watch. It's like blank. How many times can you really watch the same crap? How many times can you watch Avengers? And that's what it keeps pushing to me. Indian soap operas I don't really care about. And Indian soap operas are watched by people who are watching them live anyways. Like they barely watch online stuff. Then you talk about Netflix. There's all the premium library. You open it, you know what to watch. So like Netflix has figured that out. The dream outcome that I will know what to watch when I open it. It's, it's a big problem. I know it's like a, it's a privileged problem to have. What do I watch? Oh, it's a complete first world problem. There is no doubting that. However, you know, either you'll find what you are going to watch or you just have to type two words into a, into your search query saying that top movies on Netflix or one like, you know, movies to watch this week. And there's like about 20 articles, all of which allow you to search the library. You can find it within two clicks and everything is right there in front of you. So many times the pizza is ready or the Maggie is ready. Or the butter chicken's ready and it's hot, ready to be eaten. TV is in front of you, your friend is sitting next to you, and you're just like, 
bro, what are we watching? What are we watching? What are we watching? The food goes cold. Now it is inedible. You are still thinking, what are we watching? They're still scrolling. So I feel that is a big pain that Netflix has solved question mark question mark question mark has produced question mark question. has definitely produced <laughs> because because again that's the thing with choice right the moment you give someone the option earlier what was it there's 15 tv channels that are showing movies therefore you have these 15 movies that you can probably watch that movie starts at xyz time if you come 15 minutes late, you have missed the first 10 minutes of the movie because there's a 5 minute commercial. That's just the way it was. You didn't have the chance to rewind or record or all that did come in where you could put stuff on record and rewatch it. But again, you had to keep forwarding through the commercials. Maybe it made us a little restless. I want everything. I want it now. I want it at 2x speed. I want to watch the TV show. I have seen like 50 episode TV shows in like a day by just going forward, forward, forward. And I have that little box under the big screen. I just see what's happening in that little box. I know what happened in the show. I move on. It, I feel there are lots of pains that Netflix has solved. Lots of pains that Netflix has produced. But all in all, net, net, I think Netflix did win human behavior. I think we covered the pain fairly well. The dream outcome, again, health. I am not lonely anymore. I have things to do. Well, my movie didn't do too well at the box office. I can now put it out on Netflix and it might catch up. Like very recently, there was this Hindi movie called La Pata Ladies, which took off thanks to Netflix. It was like number one in India for I don't know how many days. And every time I opened Netflix, I saw an advertisement of it. So and that movie did really, really. And it's a small budget movie. There was this stupid show about an airline which gets lost and the people on the airline, they they are like back in the in the future. Right? Yeah, they lost like five years of their life or something like that. I, I don't know, some shit like that, right? I can't remember the name of the show. Complete garbage show. Nobody cared about it. Nobody watched it. Netflix the, picked it up and it blew up. The company literally shut them off before they even launched their la last season, right? Netflix releases it during COVID, picks it up. Then Netflix buys out the show, produces the last two seasons of the show just to complete the show. And people are happy. So this is, a lot of the times people don't even know you exist. Uh, even us, for example, people are watching this. How many people will watch this? Let's say a thousand people watch this or two thousand people watch this, right? There are hundreds of millions of people who have access to internet. If not billions of people who have access to internet. Who don't get access to this content. And someday in the future, they might get access to this content. And this is where we jump into leverage. So I think with leverage comes the conversation of what is the probability of achieving the dream outcome. The higher the leverage, the higher the probability. So with Netflix, I think they've leveraged media and tech. Because labor and capital in an online platform, you don't really think about it. It's more media, it's more tech. I think labor and capital does come in when they're producing shows, like what we mentioned earlier. So there is an aspect of labor and capital in there. And I feel like Netflix has built a reputation for itself through its media, through its tech, that when a show has been picked up by Netflix, you know it's going to be good. You know it has a certain value to it. Look at Orange is the New Black, or you look at any of these early Netflix shows that come out, came out. They were brilliant. They are what established the credibility of Netflix. I think they are undermined. I feel like people don't understand the media leverage that Netflix has built itself to have. Because we like to believe that Netflix is a library of all the movies and TV shows together. But Netflix also is like an exclusive library for the Netflix shows, Netflix originals, which have done very, very well. There was that whole phase where they went Daredevil, Luke Cage, and that whole, uh, you know, those Marvel offshoot characters. And then they, they did that whole bit and all of those blow up. I feel what you have to understand and what a lot of people don't understand is how Netflix is able to do this and why Netflix stands above the rest when they do this. Earlier when Disney was making content, Disney had to assume that kids will like it. Netflix knows you and millions others. They know them individually as people. Now they have all of this data to understand if I put a little bit of murder, a little bit of mystery 
and a little bit of stuff in the middle, I get detective voice, right? Or if I put Korean people, 13 languages, and just a lot of death, I get Squid Games. And all of this stuff works. And why it works, they know it before launching, it's going to work. I feel like the advantage Netflix has in this scenario is that even now, Disney has sort of put people in a box. So no matter how much data Disney is getting from people, it's very limited data. Because Disney is offering you the same Disney stuff. So it's saying, okay, fine, people like this more, or kids today are liking this kind of stuff more, and let's do that. Netflix is giving you an open land. They're saying, go do what you want. It is like saying, you know, you put someone out in the world and you're saying, explore. If you like this part of the world, I'm only going to show you this part of the world. If you like that part of the world, I'm going to show you that part of the world. You like three types of the world, three types of the world. Like we recently started sharing a Netflix account. You like anime. I never watched anime before. You open my Netflix page, it's half anime, half stuff that I watch, half like, you know, Bollywood movies, half random stuff that's thrown in there. And I think that is beautiful because it's able to handle a lot of what both of us watch. But at the same time, we're getting what we each like to watch as well. But if we look at this from the lens of effort and sacrifice, this increases the effort and sacrifice. Because me as a human being, you as a human being are different. When I am opening your Netflix, at that point, if Netflix can recognize it's me, life is much simpler. Netflix is not built for that, na? I can understand. However, because I'm seeing your recommendations, I am lesser and lesser likelier to open Netflix. Netflix has a solution for that, but we're not utilizing that solution. Netflix is saying create your own profile on the same account. It's giving you the option of creating, what is it, four or five profiles? Yeah. Each being distinctive to one another? Yeah. But now if you're on one profile, how the hell did Netflix know you're a different person? But it gives you the option of five profiles. And we are Indians. So we have around 15 users per Netflix account. <laughs> so how we dodge that problem is a Netflix issue. But jokes aside, now Netflix has also started finding, you know, wrongly shared accounts, trying to go with your Wi-Fi router to figure out that are you traveling, are you not? I feel this, another increase in effort and sacrifice is going to take a cut on their premium. We pay this premium because we are assuming that 15 people are going to use it, we'll pay $15 a month. That's $1 a month. But if it is that only five people are going to use it, or maybe only three people are going to use it, I don't think the premium sustains. Again, if you think about it from Netflix's point of view, I think it makes sense. However, if we look at so many other examples out there, corporations usually work the other way around. Where when they are smaller, they care about these small things. And once they get bigger, they stop caring. Netflix has gone the other way. Where once it has gotten bigger, it has gone the direction of, hey, I'm going to keep your account secure. Hey, it's your account. Let's prevent unauthorized use by connecting me to your home router, connecting, adding your home Wi-Fi or adding your home address so that any person who is outside this address when they log in, they require that extra step. I feel the deliverable matters. If someone else has access to my Netflix account, who is the loser? Am I the loser? Sure, my suggestions get wonky. I'm willing to give that up now. What else do I lose? I think the biggest loser is Netflix. I think you can also be a loser in one scenario where there's too many people watching at the same time. I think Netflix has that limit also where only like four people can watch at the same time or something like that. And, and, and that limit, limit exists, right? That limit is good. Okay, fine. We've learned to live with that limit. Even if 15 of us are using Netflix, we know none of the five of us use it at the same time. Usually we are sitting together, so it doesn't matter, right? I understand. But additionally, putting this barrier in place does tell me that I should not be paying that much more. Does tell me that, you know what, maybe have a better, maybe not better, maybe have a newer service as a favorite or just go to YouTube. They are being what in Hindi slang we would call chindi. And premium and chindi don't go together. 
Chindi is generally a miser, for those of you who don't understand. Not a miser. Thrifty. They're being unnecessarily like, you know, they're looking at every dollar spent when they have like a million dollars in the bank. So I feel what happened is Netflix started off promising more and more and more and more users. And the investors were investing in more and more and more and more users. And then they got to a point where the users or the number of users started plateauing. And then they're like, oh shit, how do we promise more users? Then they're like, okay, each of our accounts are used by like 10 people. Can we bring it down to five people? Can we bring it down to four people? And then they are like, okay, in one home, you can only have one Netflix. So this is your home account. This is your, you know, uh, tourist account, what, what not, right? But it will take a hit on the premium. Lesser number of people will be willing to pay the premium. And to dodge this, this whole game of uh, customer acquisition where I'm to show you that they have done with ads, mobile only plans in India that, hey, there are so many users, don't have money, give them mobile only plans. They've also introduced this bit of games, like on their mobile apps and all, they now have like associated games. Like they have GTA and stuff on there, which is not very good, but like it's a cool feature that they've added. But, but it doesn't speak to the core uh, problem. It's that they're going solving. away from the core. Yeah, and because of that, that doesn't add to premium. I'm not looking at Netflix as a gaming service. Nah. I'm not going there and thinking, I'm going to get Netflix so that I get games. No, I'm going I'm going to get Netflix because of their originals, because of their library, and because of their interface. And that's it. Also, because my friend has a Netflix account, probably I can touch with him and I can get access to it because it is too expensive. My friend will start thinking it is way too expensive if I can't even share it with a friend and touch with him. That's at least the Indian mentality. I don't think it is the North American mentality. And I think it does work in their favor there. But there, they won't need all of these things in place. So we're done with the effort. Now let's look at the time. So the time to get your dream outcome with Netflix is finding your movie, downloading the app, signing into your account. All of which Netflix is actively working on reducing their AI has now gotten better with suggestions. Their app comes pre-downloaded in most phones and TVs. There is a bloody Netflix button on every TV remote. And literally that piece of three and a half inch by one and a half inches of plastic slash metal is prime real estate, which all these guys are fighting over. How big is the button going to be? Where is it going to be? Is it in clickable space? Is it in non-clickable space? So there is a massive massive effort that netflix is putting in to reduce this time which people are not noticing because what is this time yeah how long does it take you to make a netflix account two minutes you have to put in your name your email and maybe a credit card that's about it how long does it take you to sign in name an email and password netflix doesn't do the scan and sign in stuff that other people have been doing which i think also adds to the premium their tv apps are better their mobile apps are better, their browsing is better. It's just the experience of the user on Netflix is so much better. And this is what we call customer acquisition cost, right? We discuss customer acquisition cost so much. How are you acquiring this customer? Let's say you buy a new TV and your TV has this new remote. And on the remote, you see a Netflix button. You're not signed into Netflix or you don't have a Netflix account. Your TV has a blank button, which does nothing. And it is like right in the middle of the remote. You really want to press it. Someday you will press it. Right? One fine day, you will press it. It will open up. You'll close it. And then next time you'll press it again. And you'll close it. And next time you'll press it again. Eventually you'll see it so many times that you'll be like, you know what, let's try it. And you'll sign up. Once you sign up, you'll be hooked. And then you'll be like, it's okay. Yeah. It's, it's just 400 bucks. It's just 500 bucks. It's just $10. It's just $15. And I don't think it's optional anymore, man. The amount of content that we consume and the speed at which we consume content. I think Netflix has become too integral a part of this content equation, especially for those consuming English content or now Korean dramas in India or, you know, anime. There is so much available on Netflix. I think maybe the other Indian regional stuff that might be lesser available. Other than Telugu movies. They are all over the place. Telugu movies, Tamil movies. Too, I think they are there 
more than Bollywood. <laughs> like, I think Bollywood has more, become more like Amazon Prime thingy. But Telugu movies, like... They're everywhere. Madness. I think that goes into a whole other discussion on the Telugu movie industry and how they do their thumbnails and everything. And, you know, let's, let's not go in there. Because then our content nerds comes out. Yeah. And I don't think anyone wants to listen to that right now. Or do you? Let us, let us know. know. We can even do that. But yes. So, time to dream outcome is reduced by spending a lot of money on customer acquisition and creating a hue of some relative comes over do you have netflix if the answer is no you're kind of a cheapo you don't even have netflix bro what's wrong with you it, it comes preoccupied with your internet subscription plan just get like a more expensive one and all of that shit right and then they're like do you have hotstar z is like punjabi movies who cares about z Hotstar is old shit. Who cares about Hotstar? Okay, you can watch Premier League there, but like nothing else. So I, I, I think I genuinely just have a Hotstar subscription for Premier League. I just log in with your account. So like that's how it works. So I feel they are taking care of time. Effort and sacrifice are the only downside to Netflix at the moment. Let's see how they tackle this because they have been losing users and the user base has not been expanding. I agree. I also think that what makes them premium is their tech. What has made Netflix the creator, the player one, the player in its own league in this whole web of OTT platforms that exist. I mean, today there's, I think, what, 50 or 100 of these platforms. There's Discovery and HBO and Z and I don't know how many there are. But Netflix stands out. The interface is just better. It's clean. It's satisfying. It is hooky. It lets you do what you want to do easily. I think the only thing they need to do is let you search better on a TV because if you're going to start typing on a TV, that takes a while. Okay, Again, use the voice thing. Yeah, then with the voice thing, there's that there's other whole can of worms. But yeah, if there was some way to control your TV with your phone Netflix app and you could link the two together and just like, you know, play your TV Netflix and search the stuff on your phone. I think that would just be game set match. But I am amazed that none of the other platforms have been able to copy Netflix because Netflix user interface is just miles better. Maybe Netflix and YouTube stand together in like a good user interface on all devices. Good on my TV, good on my phone, good on my laptop. It's just easy to use. Apple TV, garbage. Amazon, garbage. Like you can't forward. You don't have the little box thingy watch the show at, at one time like it's just so pathetic that companies with such large arsenals of money cannot figure it out dude i remember steve jobs saying this in one of his speeches that he went to a calligraphy class and that's where fonts came into the mac and because windows copied mac that's where fonts came in that's why we have different typefaces different fonts on our computers and this is obviously in the early 2000s or maybe like the late 2000s when there was this whole Mac versus Windows battle that had just started. So we live in the tech world where everyone is copying everyone. Everyone is accusing everyone of copying everyone. And why the hell has nobody copied Netflix? Um, uh, even if they try, I, I don't think it's easy. Have they tried? I don't know. And it, it has is... anybody tried? Because I don't see anybody's platform that good. No, I completely agree, man. And like Netflix, if you're listening to this, good job on the interface. And Bezos, if you're listening to this, please fix it. What are you doing, bro? Like, just fix it. And Geo, if you're listening to this, just shut one of the platforms. You bought Hotstar. What is wrong with you? Put all of that stuff on Hotstar and just shut Geo TV. Why does it exist? Oh my God, Geo TV being like up there for the worst interface possible. Oh my God, unacceptable. So there we have it. Pain, dream, effort probability and time. Which company should we do next? You decide.